Hey everybody. You know what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say it anyways. It's hot. It's been a rough one. Temperature, 80 degrees. Humidity, 75%. Might as well be working in an oven. It's about 9.45. Got the pilot's console out of this thing. Because I'm working on it. Let's go have a look. I just want to say uh, thank you for my, my GoFundMe today donation. My regular guy. Man, I appreciate that so much. Well, here she is. Um, last time I touched this thing was before I went to Texas, uh, with hopes of finding as many B36 parts and or subcontractor parts that I could find that belong on the B36. Um, I had these previous to going on that trip, but I did find all these bulb holders, panel light holders, whatever you call them, along with the E6 Honeywell autopilot control, or remote control, that is and the push to reverse props button. So, what I've done on this over the last couple of days is number one, I got the, um, the radio and communications panel. I got the Zeus channel in there. I'm very happy, it's very good looking. Got these vertical beams in for the quadrant. The main shaft runs right through here as well as a few other things. These holes are for the bulb holders that live on the, the quadrant cover. There's four here and there's one on the front and there's one up here and then one up there. And then there's a whole mess of those lights on here and here as well on these extensions. Those are probably what I'm gonna build next because I ordered some uh, switches to give me a relative idea of how big things are in here because I don't have any measurements in this area, but I, I do know where things are relative to the equipment that I have. And I know the, I have the measurements for all this, so this is spot on. So I know relatively how big this stuff needs to be. I know that the basket that the quadrants sit in is about six inches long, seven inches long. But it'll be perfect because there's things that have to live in here. Um, one of those things are the the readouts, the big um, circle things for the uh, the trim wheels. And then there's a big uh, mess of stuff that lives under here. Might as well go ahead and show you. This is how you would remove this right here. And I'll show you. You can't really see but it sits under it. But the way you would actually do that is there's four screws, one, two, and two on the other side under the screws. And then this guy, I'll throw it off of there. And inside of here, number one, I figured out the Teleflex thing. It's, it's a big uh, rotating wheel that's got, it's a tubular, well, it's actually a, a, tu a metal tube, it's kind of hard to explain, but that runs down to, I assume, some regular uh, non-metal pulleys, Bakelite, whatever they're called, up under the flight deck floor. And then that would take it back to the, uh, the other one of these that lives on the, uh, the flight engineer station. I need to push this in just a hair. It's about a quarter of an inch too far out because I know exactly where that line is on the real airplane. Other things that live under here are going to be the, uh, and this is for the, the master RPM, which this controls that, that lives under the, uh, the flight engineer station. And then here is your mechanism or your handle for your uh, turbo superchargers. And that's a big Honeywell thing that I gotta find or replicate, but it lives there. And then you've got more, 
you got the big thing, another, I think the rudder trim that lives here, and it's got gears that run down underneath the flight deck floor, as well as a few other things that I'm forgetting. It's pretty complicated in here. But this thing is crooked. Just a little bit. But, and of course, these, I can get it on there. Perfect. These will all be lighting panels, the plexiglass. So when these light up through the little windows, they'll illuminate this. And this one is actually going to work because it's not. It doesn't have any uh, any writing on it. The red light will just simply shine down on this, and there you go. But there's a panel. There's a panel. There's a panel. There's a panel here and a panel here. Ones that live up on top of the uh, turbo, turbo supercharger selector. And there's a big one here, a big one here. Here's one, there's one. And of course a big one here and a big one here. So the moral of the story is, is once I get this thing hooked up to 20 volt, 28 volt AC with all the light bulb batteries or light bulbs in there, it's gonna be pretty cool looking, even without the writing. But, the reverse engineering of this thing is awesome because I really appreciate that they put these nice doors on the side because it gives me access to everything in there. And this is, I've got uh, excellent photos of uh, how this thing looks. Of course, they're grainy and from a distance, but because I have the equipment, I know exactly where everything needs to be. And I, it's true reverse engineering in that I started with the skin because I have pictures of tape measures on these rivet lines. And uh, there you go. Let's go to the next exhibit. This is a uh, this is kind of a mock-up of a uh, early model flight engineer station. This is what would have been found. The different variations, of course, the v big vast variations, by the way. But these lived on the A model, the B model, the D model, and the F model, and of course the. RB36D and the RB36E. Um, it has one seat for one flight engineer. The other flight engineer sat about right here, right behind the aircraft commander, and he helped monitor it. Contrary to popular belief, every B36 from the A to the J had two active full-time flight engineers. They just didn't sit side by side. Um, little factoid from the SAC film, he tells uh, Dutch that he can ride behind the AC and see how it's done. He's referring to that seat that is behind the AC. However, for the film, so they could get everybody in the, in the uh, frame, they moved that seat to behind where the pilot would sit. So Dutch is sitting right there. That seat does not exist in the real airplane. It's behind the aircraft commander. But... Thanks to Doug down there in Fort Worth for getting that for me. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, there's only a handful, if not one or two of these left in the universe. That's the uh, ignition switch. It has the six terminals for the six piston engines. That's gonna be a fun one to find. Then here are just breakers, but I'm building this for a uh, little hands-on thing I got coming up in the fall give people an opportunity to sit or experience what it feels like to sit at a B-36 flight engineer station, but also what it's like to sit in an early model flight engineer station. Because there's only one place you can do that in the world right now. I don't know what's up with it or where it is, but here's your second opportunity right here. Got that seat nice and adjusted. Got it up in the air. Need to fix the the basket, but there's my turret. Got him propped up. That's a dynamic turret. because You see it's got the recoil springs in there. The early model B36s from the B system or static. They didn't have a recoil system. Give you an idea how big this thing is. Someday I will restore this. There's not a whole lot to it. It's pretty much fabrication. It's not going to be perfect. And there is a uh, 
a ballistics computer. Every one of the gun systems on the B36 had a ballistics computer that looked identical to that. The nose, the six fuselage, and or beam, and the tail. And that sucker weighs about 60 pounds. Um, that's all electrical. The ones prior to that on the B system RTCs were all analog. Whew. Other than that, I think we're all caught up. Did get the garage cleaned up just to mess it up again, but at least it's... Got my lathes up. Definitely gonna need those girls for the, uh, the fuel control stuff and the quadrants for the uh, flight engineer and the pilots. Make that job a lot simpler. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time.